video we are going to be dealing with a mini phalaenopsis if everything goes according to plan. <laughs> Very big word with two letters, if. Then I would like to address another one because I want to be containing the aerial roots. I'm already working towards the schedule of bringing my orchids indoors. I know I still probably have about eight weeks left to do so, but still the question here is now fitting orchids back onto shelves as and when necessary and <laughs> they're so beautiful I don't want to destroy the roots. Also, mini phalaenopsis like a little bit more water than we actually give them credit for, at least in my opinion, maybe my environment is different, I don't know. But I have not had an easy time with mini phalaenopsis as, let's just say, an easy time as I had with all the other phalaenopsis and believe me that was difficult enough. You can see that the roots here are reluctant and that is so typical for these little guys and I haven't had them bloom and grow properly la -di da and for that reason every single root in the pot is fundamental which I'm going to try and protect as best as possible because getting that one into the pot is going to be super interesting. I have a plan. We'll wait and see if I can actually execute it. Now on the subject of putting aerial roots in a pot. Well, in this case, these roots are in active growth and the Valaman takes on a completely different characteristic when a root is in active growth as opposed to an aerial root that is not in active growth which is new. So here's the thing, an aerial root, not in active growth, which is new, is going to repel water and that is based on the length of the root. The longer aerial roots are that are old and still functioning, they will be absorbing water immediately because they are long and established. So there's the difference. And my other one is not in active root growth as far as I can see from the surface. So I'm going to have to see what's in the pot if I get around to it in this video because it is quite late in the day. I don't want to rush what I'm doing. There's more activity behind the hedge than I'm comfortable with. I hope it's people leaving the coast, but anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I would like to at least thread this root into the pot and not break it. So that's what we're going to try and do. First of all, I'm going to rinse out my pot because this one's not a broken one. I can reuse it. Woohoo! Let's see if we can get little Aurora in here. This was one of my Aurora 2.0. I now have a 3.0 because I thought I had lost her. <laughs> yeah, I've been struggling with mini fowls, but I think that bit by bit I'm getting the hang of them. And I want to make sure that maybe she will bloom for us next season because she is super, super fragrant. The plan here is to thread this root down into the reservoir and then make it a water root. And why is that going to work? Because it's in active growth and the Valaman's characteristic are ready for any kind of environment that the root is going to grow into and mature. Let's just put it that way. The Valaman will still adapt under these circumstances to a change in environment. So I'm going to qualify that last little sentence there. It does work to thread a root in through a drainage hole down there. My attempt here is to make sure that it actually won't break. <laughs> and if I have to leave it like this for a moment longer, just to make sure that it soaks in, then that is what I'm going to do while we get the other one out. Let's see if I can still get that one to be a little bit more flexible than it is right now because I can feel the root tip touching the bottom of the mask. This is the little cakey that came off the mother plant, which is called Maximilian. So this is Maximilian baby 2.0. It's beautiful white phalaenopsis. You can see here how quickly these long, old aerial roots absorb the water. That is because of their age, has nothing to do with the fact they're in active growth. The question in this scenario is, will they survive being potted up? Because the Valaman doesn't have a change in characteristics because of the active growth that is missing in this case. So we won't know unless we find out. 
So the reason I'm unpotting this orchid right now and risking it is exactly the same as before with the other one. I want to make sure that I protect roots during the winter. Let's see what she's done in the meantime, because here is an opportunity for me to show you that I like what I see has gotten accustomed inside the pot. This is great. And she can live with this because if I cannot thread these roots into the pot, I am going to be able to cut them off. And that is something I do not encourage doing. <laughs> Who wants to cut off viable roots? I sure don't. But in order to achieve what I'm getting at, at least I have options because she has some beautiful roots that are accustomed to the self-watering setup. And I'm going to work with that just to make sure that I don't start getting cross with myself because I am breaking aerial roots. At least this way, shelf space is contained and I've made a conscious decision as to where we're going to go next with this orchid in self-watering. Now, if you are growing complex hybrid Phalaenopsis of the standard large size, and then you also have in your collection complex Phalaenopsis hybrid of mini size, I wonder what your observations are, and I would like you to share those in the comments because here are my observations. Mini Phalaenopsis want a lot more water than we usually give them credit for. We see small roots, we see small little orchids, and then we think, yeah, no, that's not going to need a lot of water. And then in many cases, of course, we're also discussing wet dry cycle. Well, in my case, let's just say the self-watering setup has exactly the same requirements as a wet dry cycle would. Because if you're growing a mini Phalaenopsis, let's say, in bark and moss as a wet dry cycle, you may have noticed that you might need to add either a little bit more moss or reduce the size of your bark because your little orchid is too thirsty and staying dry for too long and you can't keep up with the watering. They are thirsty little cretins. And here you can see my Lekka was large, small, all mixed together back in the day in 2019 when I potted both of these orchids up. And that is a lesson I have noticed that I can soak my mini fowl pots for an hour every third, every fourth day when the temperatures are adequate. Every third, every fourth day. Yeah, you heard correctly. I don't do that with the big ones. So having had this large and small lecker mix in there, I am now going to switch to only small lecker, one microfiber, as opposed to the two that I had in the previous pots. So I'm going to up the water retention capacity within the pot for these little guys, even though it would appear they didn't do too badly, but I know they can do better. And that has to do with the fact mini Phalaenopsis like a lot more water than we actually give them credit for. So if your mini Phalaenopsis is not performing or you're losing them or your roots are dying, chances are you haven't given it enough water and the roots are being dehydrated by the media that you're using and staying dry for too long, which is also a problem in a wet dry cycle as much as it is in a self-watering setup with any kind of wicking inorganic media. So let's see if I can get these roots into the pot. And no, I'm not concerned if they don't survive. If in two or three years I'm repotting the orchid and I see dead roots, that's absolutely fine. It is worth the attempt though. What I would like to also focus on is the position of my orchid in the pot. The aerial roots are at this moment in time not my priority. I want them in the pot, but if the orchid switches into a position in the pot that then has me intervene even, let's say, next year, that's what I want to avoid. But this isn't looking too shabby. This is actually pretty good. Now, some will be sticking out over the top, but, you know, we've got the majority of each aerial root in the pot. What a doddle. You know what? I thought this one was going to give me more problems than it's actually giving me. <laughs> Turns out I was wrong. I think the other one is going to give me more problems, but we'll have to wait and see if I can fandangle that root in and turn it into the reservoir without breaking it. Anyway, can we be a little bit more? Nope, I have resistance at the edge of the pot right here. 
So we've met our limit with regards to the position as it pertains to the center. Small lecker going in. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for being here. And thank you everybody that has already seen many, many of my repots. You're so appreciated. However, if you're new to my channel and you're seeing me fill the pot with water, that is not because my setup requires it, but that is because by a fluke, when I was repotting off camera, I think two years ago, three years ago, I was leaving water in the pot just to save on my RO water. And it turns out that this little fluke cutting corners kind of activity showed me how Lekka was coming into the pot so gently and falling into all the crevices in between the root system and not bashing the velamen. It is a gentle repot. And if I jiggle the pot a little bit i will do that later a little bit more when i hold the orchid in place but i could see how the lecker was just going where my hand wouldn't make it go as easily and with as little damage to the velamen as possible so this is not something that you have to do but it has worked for me super super well All right, at this stage, I can just hold on to the orchid to maintain her position in the pot and give the pot a shake. So whatever is loose and not in place at the bottom of the pot is now going to find its way. And then we can drain the pot and see how things fall and whether we need to add some more lecca. And in my opinion, we do because when it comes to self-watering when a root and its velamen have a certain understanding of its environment as in this case this velamen is used to being wet for most of its existence that needs to be re-established the velamen of a root is like our skin it's the most important organ that an orchid has it breathes eats perspires gets nutrients, gets all of these good things from that velamen. The moment we change the velamen's environment is when we risk losing our roots because the velamen cannot handle a new environment that it is not accustomed to growing in. And that is the risk I'm going to take right now having potted up aerial roots because that velamen is accustomed to dry and in my case, I don't have humidity kind of climate. So Keep that in mind when you repot, that you make sure the status quo around all the roots that you see is maintained based on where the velamen grew and what the environment was around it. There we go. I consider that a success. Now I could fill the reservoir with a fertilizer supplement or whatever it is that this orchid requires. Turns out she had a CalMag soak a couple of days ago, so she is taken care of. But if you're growing in organic media and you have repotted your orchid into fresh media, know that after having done so, it is paramount to give that pot a good soak for about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of your orchid, because that new organic media will act as a desiccating agent against the roots of your orchid, any orchid. But as we are with fowls, it's going to happen. The velamen is not used to having contact with such a dry, dry media. Soaking the pot will start to at least help that new organic media to absorb water. And then keep an eye out for your little mini fowl in the coming week or two weeks while she is in that new pot and don't let that pot dry out for too long. If you do see condensation around the pot, it is still okay in the pot, but that is kind of already your signal to be ready to give the pot another soak. And I say soak, at least for the first few waterings, because new media mm -mm, against velamen, that is going to pull out the moisture out of the roots. The same applies with lecca. Lecca is a desiccating agent once it is dry. So that is why a self-watering setup or a semi-hydro setup, the lecca shouldn't ever really get dry unless you have super high humidity. And I'm talking 85 to 90% of humidity all year round. So watch your velamen and your orchid will be fine. Now let us see little Aurora, if she's gonna be a diva. Yes, she is. I've already cracked the root back here. It just cracked. You can see the 90 degree angle. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we're up against down here. 
can see that it is absorbing moisture. That's good. Okay, now that we've cracked it, it's just a matter of keep going with the initial plan. We may lose the root, we may not. We may see it branching on the next repot. But for now, I also have the second aerial root nicely in the pot with a slight crack. But I am going to keep going. I want this orchid to be in the pot with both the aerial roots. And there's one root that is kind of stiff and bothering me. The fact that I can't lower the orchid any further than that. So I'm going to go in and do something else that is <laughs> frowned upon. I'm going to cut off the length of the root to accommodate what I want to achieve here. And I missed an old root right there, which we can deal with. All a little bit cumbersome now because I threaded that root through the hole. I don't want to keep moving it in and out, in and out. If I want to get a proper assessment of whether I'm making a mistake or the root is going to fail, I want to know that it failed because I cracked it. I want to know that it failed because it was an aerial root. I doubt that that would make it fail because it is an active growth. But if I now move it in and out, in and out, I will definitely have a very different kind of, hmm, let's say, understanding as to did my root fail because I kept on bruising the velamen. So let's get that pot back into the water. And we have a root tip right at the back here that I need to be mindful of because that one grew nicely into the media, which I appreciate. It's got an active root tip. Can we scoot this one a little bit forward? Yes, we can. And now I just have to make sure that I keep a good, let's say, photographic memory as to where this root tip is, because I could right now put in my tag, but it's going to float everywhere. I just don't want to afterwards put my tag somewhere and then be stabbing at that root. Now, two things here for future reference. If anything happens to this orchid, I can refer back to this video. Two things. I have cracked this aerial root. Okay, not a problem. The root tip is at the bottom of the inner pot. Fine. If it doesn't progress on growing, we will find out eventually. And if it dies off, we will see it happening right here because this is the point where it cracked. And then I might be able to observe decay below the crack or above it. The second aerial root also is very stressed right here. Remember, it was actually growing up. So this could be a factor that I'm going to lose this aerial root as well. And on top of that, it has a crack in it. But these are two factors just to keep an eye on for future reference. There we go. Now I just have to be mindful that I can't take this little orchid out of its mask and set it on any surface. Otherwise, definitely, definitely, that will be 100% death for this root. All right. Today I did something that was very controversial. There's a lot of opinions out there. There's a lot of yay and sayers, nay sayers about what to do with aerial roots. And you saw that there were some accidents in between but I did complete what I set out to do. I want that root to be in the water in the case of my little Aurora. Now, two different scenarios going on here. This reservoir for the time being, as it is a self-watering with Lekka reservoir, is not going to have any water in it. Again, we have an aerial root that has just been put into some very, very water retentive media. I want this to become a water root eventually. So now that it's nice and wet, now that the top here and in between the pot and everything, it's nice and wet, I will be keeping an eye out on this root and see how it progresses. I will be flushing every single day 
because that route from now on is going to stay wet but not submerged, if that makes sense. I can just about guarantee that if I had not broken that route, snapped it in any way, shape or form, that it would survive what I'm planning for it in the future. I could 99% say it's not a problem to have put that into the pot because it is in active growth. The difference being with my little one here. Oh, but I do love seeing at least the roots in the pot. Don't get me wrong, I love my aerial roots, but not when it comes to the season that I'm up against, where space is going to be an issue and real estate is going to be tight. I need to be able to make sure that if I'm going to do something wrong, I do it with the best of my intentions as opposed to with an accident, which will happen, can happen, based on, yeah, my gross space. Anyway, little Maximilian here. Everybody's inside, very old aerial roots, absorbing water very, very quickly, different belayment characteristics, may survive, may not survive, but we have a gorgeous root inside. That's why I proceeded with this project, as opposed to just cutting them off and being done with them. At least this way, we're giving the aerial roots a chance. My other option of just cutting them off, that would have worked as well, seeing as we have a beautiful root in the pot with a growing tip. But why not give it a go? And in this case, I do have water in the reservoir. For the time being, it's just plain water because these guys have had all their nutrition in the past couple of days leading up to this repot. And because I'm not trying to adapt an aerial root to become a water root. So there's two little differences going on here and I hope I explained the difference of why I'm approaching one in such a way and another one in such a way. And now all that's left is to keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully Aurora will bloom for us in the coming season. Well, Maximilian has to grow up a little bit. Big Brother is waiting for him. I really hope that this video was helpful, that you didn't feel I was trying to rush the subject simply because it's late in the day here where I'm at. But if you think somebody else could benefit from the information and the two variables in this video, then please share it. I would really appreciate that. And remember to leave me your opinion when you saw what I was doing based on what you've been told or what you do in your own collection, be it. How thirsty are your mini fowls or potting aerial roots up? Thank you so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. I wish you a beautiful day. On that one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care, bye.